Good afternoon, friends, followers, and channel members. So, we've got a nice afternoon flight for you today. Stavanger, where we landed last night, and we're off to Berlin Brandenburg. And it is Aerosoft's Berlin Brandenburg, so please, Lord, be kind with the frame rate issues when we, uh, when we get there. Um, right, is it just me, or does it sound a tad windy? <laughs> I've just put the headphones on and uh, thought, oh my god goodness that uh, that that wind seems to be uh, whipping up we'll get some atis in a little bit and see what's uh, what's happening there uh, so a hey, welcome to everybody today we're streaming of course on youtube and on facebook and to twitch as well so uh, good afternoon, Chumi, Eastbirds, Dark Fury, and uh, Jean Ray. Great to see you guys as well. So, an afternoon flight means, of course, we're on live time, we're on live weather, and we are on VATSIM. Um, let's see, uh, let's see how we get on. This is a handcrafted modern airport, and uh, we get to see a little bit more in the daytime just now, as opposed to uh, the night time where we landed yesterday. Of course, it looked very nice in the evening yesterday, but I am looking forward to a little bit of. Uh, sunlight and daytime uh, daytime flying uh dark fury my friend hope the uh, fps be kind to you thank you very much for your uh, kind donation there and uh, continual technical support as we've been chatting uh, recently um yeah we've also tried to uh, dark and i have been trying to uninstall the latest windows update uh, without success so what i have done is because I know Brandenburg is perhaps going to be quite intense with the frame rates. Uh, we've never had an issue before, not until the last Windows update. Uh, what I actually did is rolling caches on, as you know, guys, and I went to and loaded in. We spawned in at Brandenburg before I started the stream. Will it help? I guess we'll find out in an hour or so. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, good afternoon, Nick. Great to see you. Uh, great to see you on board. Right. So, shortish flight today. I need to be finished in around two hours, twenty minutes max, because if not, the child is going to be stuck stranded at school. Let's uh, let's get in, shall we? Oh, right. So, I'm going to turn on the uh, get the fly pad all turned on. That jetway is coming in as uh, as well. You've also got me on the microphone for the full duration of this uh, this flight. It's not the longest flight in the world, and let's get some external power coming to get those batteries on. Seems to be a while since I flew this aircraft in uh, full on daylight. It's looking very nice. Right, is that uh, ground power unit? Where is the ground power unit? Have we not got one? Surely we do. Sometimes if it's not there, you press it again, turn it off, turn it back on again, it sometimes spawns in and uh, arrives. Oh, no. Okay, well I do think we have ground power anyway, it's just a, uh, it's missing from the sim for some reason. Uh, but there we go, we've got external power available and that's now uh, that's now on. Wonderful. Right, let's uh, check. So, weather information. Oh, I need to plumb this in first, don't I? I forgot about that. Oh, I wish this was saved. Easy jet sim pilot. There we go. And let's have a look, shall we? Right. Oh, wow, look at that weather. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why it was windy. 28 knots. 28 knots. Um, so, let's see. A few Clumlo Nimbus as well scattered around 6,000 feet. Uh, well, QNH then is 1015. Um, temporarily 4,000 meters in showers of rain. Uh, doesn't look like it when I'm looking outside, so uh, there we go. Uh, Let's uh, let's crack on. Right, okay, so there's our ATIS. It's going to be a runway 36 departure with a lovely little bit of wind blasting down our uh, from the left as we depart. Jess Lone, good, uh, good afternoon, mate. I hope you are well. Uh, how's the frame rate issues been for you since the last, uh, last update? 
Okay, so we've got our ATIS. Let's have a look at the fuel then. What are we expecting in Brandenburg, apart from terrible frame rates and a potential crash? Uh, our weather's looking quite kind to us there. Ceiling visibility and uh, nice light winds. Right, so onto the dispatch. Operational flight plan, what do we have? Um, we've got planned fuel. I don't think we need to go anything more than that. Everything's fine with the with the weather at our destination. So around 6.2 uh, 6.2 tons. So let's look at getting that uh, loaded or defueled. 6.2 or thereabouts. Doesn't have to be exact, of course. Oh, there we go. That'll do. Uh, right, so that should be offloaded in around uh, four minutes, according to that. So that's uh, that's on. Uh, Danny, yeah, let me sort that out. Uh, one second. Let me grab you the operational flight plan. Jess, are you back at work next month? <laughs> Excellent. You won't have to worry about frame rates. Okay, so operational flight plan is coming into the chat on YouTube now for those of you that uh, that want it. HD, good uh, good afternoon. All right, so fueling is uh, is underway, or rather defueling. So passengers, as I say, I've got to be out of here by three p.m. UK time. Otherwise, uh, the wife will shout at me for leaving the kid at school. She doesn't understand how important this is. Cabin crew refueling is underway and the bags are starting to get loaded, so let's open the doors and allow our passengers on board. Thank you. Baggage and no catering. And passengers are starting to arrive as well. Okay, so. Just take that overhead, all's fine with uh, regards to that. We'll do the quick engine test. Fire engine one. Fire engine two. And APU. There you go. Uh, Jess, you're not the only one, my friend. It's not the world update, it's the Windows update that we think is now causing the issues. Uh, frame rates have actually been really rather nice to me here in uh, Stavanger, so that's uh, that's quite nice. All right, well let's come down. Uh, Q and H one zero one five. Set that up. One zero one five. Anti skid is on. Come down to the pedestal and guard frequency one two one five. And VHF one. Have we got any air traffic control around us today? Let's have a look. No, we've not. So that's going to be a unicorn one two two decimal eight, which I'll switch over to in a little while. There we go. Uh, check everything else looks to be where it should and uh, it is. Yeah, cockpit door, switching panel, thrust levers, engine masters, engine motor selector, uh, parking brake, etc, etc. Transponder is set. Okay, let's come up to the glare shield and a little bit of light on that. QNH1015 set and cross check. Flight directors 1 and 2 both on and instrument panel primary flight display turn that up navigation display turn the EFIS up captain 79 good uh, afternoon to you turn those panel lights off for the first officer get rid of those and Iris alignment will be in around five minutes time so let's come down and uh, have a look if we can pull things in from Simbrief. Let's try and turn the brightness of some of these things up since they made it really realistic. Uh, weather request? No I don't want the weather request. I want the init press. Pull, uh, pull that in. Okay, Stavanger to Berlin, one hour twenty-two minutes. Excellent. Uh, fuel on board, ignore that. We're being defueled at the moment. So performance and weight. Let's uh, let's have a check. Right, so 166 passengers. So let's have a look at the payload. 17264. Check that with the operational flight plan. 17264. Zero fuel weight of 58.3. 58.3 and just make sure the aircraft matches zero 
fuel weight center of gravity there we go uh, all right let's load that weight on as well there we go so aircraft status then we are uh, we've got the leap engines type a320 neo this is the experimental version from fly by wire we've got a valley air rack cycle all is good let's do the init a page init request data link bring that in okay so the alternate let's zip over and start putting information in there alternate is copenhagen Ironically enough, there is air traffic control at the moment at Copenhagen. Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. Is that it? Yeah, Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. Uh, easy 3 4 Alpha Mike, the call sign. Cost index of 8, of course. Uh, flight level 370 minus 57. 370 minus 47. So let's just go ahead and uh, enter that. Um, slight change there. And the tropo is 20, that's low, 24013, 24013, uh, HD, yeah, if you want to uh, uh, give us the performance calcs for that, uh, what's our estimated takeoff weight, uh, we're departing runway 36, yeah, departing runway 36, um, and what's the estimated takeoff weight? Uh, it may be a little bit higher. Uh, well, actually, not too much. So, estimated takeoff weight is around 64.3 tons. 64.3 tons. If we work on that, that's probably going to be very close. Uh, right, so there's the init A and flight plan. So, what are we planning then? Uh, the Peveb 1 Hotel from runway 36. Runway 36. Scroll down. Peveb 1 Hotel. Insert. And then at the other end in Berlin. It is the Ketab 25 left for runway 25 left. What great names. Not the VOR 25 left. ILS 25 left. Lovely long runway. <laughs> Which is great if we, if we have rubbish frame rate. <laughs> that long runway could uh, be a godsend. Uh, oh, we've no stars, have we? Of course, we've no stars in this because the airport doesn't exist, technically. Um, right, well, in that case, let's just have a quick look. There's no air, air traffic control there at the moment anyway. Um, right, we could probably almost put this in ourselves. So, um, is it via Ketab? Is that the one? Via Atgub. Let's see. Uh, I'm not even sure where Ketab is. Oh no, it's there. There we go. All right, yeah, we'll come in via Ketab. And then that will bring us in. Um, reasonably well on here it's not going to be exact um we can't even select no veers i think can i uh, select a different veer oh hang on there we go ketab i can select a different veer that's what i want um yeah let's go in via ketab then g press primary let's clear that and insert Uh, HD, what we got? 64.5 tons, wet runway, as it was saying, wet runway. Anti ice on, yeah, definitely. We've got a cumulonimbus apparently around us. Um, full length flaps one. Wonderful, and a flex. Thank you very much. Uh, right, so distance of 569. Let's check this. 573. They're actually pretty close, you know. Uh, right, so if I just scroll through here, because we've not technically got a star in here. Uh, Ketab, and then Delta Bravo 403, um, 423 is next, what's after 433, which is uh, next, um, oh actually they're all there, so it's, is Zanim the last one, is Zanim on there as well, oh look, Zanim is there as well, so actually all those waypoints have been put in, how strange, no star, but the veer is working. There we go. So, happy with the flight plan. Uh, Radnav page, what should we chuck into that for our departure here? If we need anything. 
Um, I think we're probably all right, actually. Yeah, nothing we need raw data-wise for uh, for that. So we can leave the red nav page in it B page. Then let's um, have a look. So zero fuel weight was what was it? Fifty-eight point three. I'm going to double check that. Did I read that right? 58.3. Yep, 58.3. 30 is the zero fuel weight center of gravity. And we have a trip wind, tailwind of 20. That's what I need. Maybe I will get the boy in at school. They'll pick him up in time. Tailwind of 20. Okay, we've taken... How much fuel did we take? We took around 6.2 tonnes. Fuel planning, 5.6. Wonderful. Um, right, in that case, has uh, defueling finished just yet? 62. Um, that's good. Check that fuel. Have they done down below? Uh, refuel has completed. Excellent. Uh, so, what did we say we've got? 62. 6.2, yeah. So let's pop that in. 6.2. Uh, oh, there we go. So takeoff weight is 64.4. So yeah, we can use the, those performance calculations then. HD, you did 64.5, didn't you? That's uh, that's fine. Uh, the alternate fuel, let's check. That's uh, okay. What have we got? I wish that zoom level would stay. Alternate fuel is 1.8, actually, uh, 1.9, that's actually not far off, isn't it? I've seen it worse, 1.9. Just update that to about an hour's travelling time, uh, 48 minutes, fair enough. Okay, good stuff, so the takeoff performance page then, so... Um, Tell you what, we'll do it on here as we usually do. Then I will uh, check it along with HDs. Uh, so, what did we say? 645 and uh, where are we? Echo November Zulu Victor. Look at the meta. There you can see the meta if you couldn't see it before, that wind. And runway 36, full length of the runway 2556. Let's check. Uh, runway 36, um, ooh, is that right? Runway 36, oh hang on, am I looking at the wrong bit? That, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong bit. Uh, runway 36, from runway head 2555, is that a metre difference? 2555, and calculate with packs off, anti-ice will be on, runway wet, that's how HD calculated it, so let's go with calculate, and let's compare this with the uh, real world figures. Uh, so, real world figures given us for flaps config 1, uh, we've actually got a flex temp of 70. HD, that's the max, isn't it? Very close. Uh, V1136, you've got 137, and VR145, exactly the same. V2145 here, V2 from HD is 146. So, they are really, really close. The flex is a bit off, but um, other than that, uh, that's. Uh, that's fine. In that case, let me just scribble some of these uh, things down. So we'll go with HD's performance uh, because HD's is for the actual Neo. This is for the older engines anyway. So, uh, transition altitude. What's that here? Uh, transition altitude is 7,000 feet. And thrust reduction, acceleration, uh, what's the airport uh, elevation here? Noise abatement 2 anyway, I believe airport elevation is 29, so 1029, that's close enough. Uh, 1020, so that's fine. Um, 
Engine out acceleration 1029. Oh, I've got the same figures as you then, HD. <laughs> 1029. I can update those actually. It'll really, it'll update it to, uh, I think it only works in multiples of 10. Uh, so it'll be 1030 both times. There we go. Flaps 1 config. And a flex temp of 70. Uh, right, so what does the simulator give us? Let's see. Um, V2. Oh, these are much, much lower than uh, than the ones from HD. Right, let's put HDs in. Uh, so V2 is 146. VR is 145. And V1, 137. Uh, there we go. Check uh, check the speed. So green dot two one five. Uh, so HD actually, when you did it with the wing anti ice on as well, you had one degree less of. So that's very close. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, good stuff. That's all. Uh, that's all sorted. Right. Let's have a look and do a departure briefing then. So. First of all, we are parked at stand 16, uh, so we're going to uh, push back facing south, and then we will taxi out via, uh, it will be via Romeo, won't it? Taxi out via Romeo, and then it will be down um, to Golf 4, Golf 5. Cross runway 2-9, uh, Golf 6, and then we'll be holding at Golf 7 for runway 3-6. And then after departure, let's have a look at our uh, departure. So, uh, I was re -reading, reading these uh, notes before. Basically, no turns below 3,000 feet. We need to be above 3,000 feet before we can make any turns, uh, which I believe is in the departure briefing. Uh, is that just here? Oh, that's Berlin. I don't want Berlin. Come back. Um, departure briefing. Da, da, da. Where's it gone? Yeah, there you go. Climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet minimum before commencing any turn. Air traffic control may clear relatively quiet aircraft to commence at 2,000. So, oh, we can go up to 3,000. That's fine. Uh, what is our initial climb? So, initial climb then is 6,000 feet. Transition altitude 7,000 feet. Uh, minimum safe altitude around as we go. Uh, we're on the Pevev 1 Hotel, aren't we? Uh, so 4,800 feet is our minimum safe. Uh, HD, enjoy your lunch, my friend. <laughs> Uh, so, once we get to 3,000 feet, we'll make that right-hand turn, and, of course, max speed 250, which will be below 10,000 feet by this point, so that's, uh, that's fine. No issues with, uh, no issues with that. Uh, what's our uh, SID? Peveb 1 Hotel. And I like to make note of these. Scribble them down on my uh, little chart that I have in front of me because if air traffic control come online at the last minute and we know they like to do that, then uh, I like to have everything straight to add without having to flick through sim brief uh, charts. Okay, so with regards to the weather, we've already flagged up. It's rather windy, so we're going to get quite a headwind on um, quite a headwind on takeoff, and uh, could potentially just be a little bit blustery. Wind will be coming over from the left. Um, aircraft A320 Neo experimental version, and of course, the only issues we've got with this aircraft is that it doesn't perform RMP RNAV approaches. Shouldn't be an issue with this flight. Uh, threats to be aware of, of course, of course, the uh, the, the weather and uh, with the winds. And if we have an issue on departure, we will be heading out and uh, we'll be able to come back here. We're below the maximum landing weight on departure, so we can come back. That's uh, that's not a problem. Um, 
decent length runway, nice uh, nice headwind to come back in on uh, if we need to circle around and come back in on runway 36. We just need to be aware, uh, be aware of the terrain, so if we can get to about 5,000 feet, uh, make sure with that minimum safe altitude, then, uh, then that would be good. Right, so I think all passengers are on board, we're about ready to start uh, cleaning up here, see how we're doing. Uh, yeah, all passengers are now on uh, on board. Hi, yeah, we're uh, just about finished setting up, so uh, once everyone's on board, they have to be able to close the doors. Uh, thanks, oh, and uh, once we get to cruising altitude, if I could have a uh, cup of tea, that would be lovely. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board our EasyJet service. Please place your large bags into the overhead locker, wheels first, and keep your small items under the seat in front of you. These include laptops, handbags, duty-free, and loose items of clothing. Once you have safely stowed your cabin bag, please take your seat. To help us ensure a prompt departure, we would kindly ask that you keep the aisle clear, enabling all remaining customers to board. Your seatbelt can now be fastened, ready for departure. This is a no-smoking service. Thank you for observing this policy. Thank you. Boarding is still underway, but we're almost done. It shouldn't take much longer. Okay, so APU is firing up at the moment now fueling's uh, sorted i'm just going to check that departure that departure looks exactly as i uh, expected to see it that right hand turn after a three thousand feet and i can put the constraints on as well actually not that it's shown any let's uh, there's only the speed restriction to be aware of but that's the normal 250 knots below ten thousand feet so if we scroll through see what that arrival looks like in berlin and that is exactly what the chart has Wonderful. Paul B, good morning. Good morning. Where are you, Paul? Okay, so is the APU uh, up and running? It is. Let's get the APU bleed on. And we can turn off external power now. And to the ground. External power coming off. Uh, what's catering doing? Is catering finished? Check those doors. Okay, so we've done our uh, departure briefing. We'll uh, contact air traffic control. Well, not air traffic control, but we'll go over to Unicom in um, in a minute or so, and then let's do our uh, before start checklist first. So. Cockpit preparation is all complete. Signs are on and auto. Our ideas, we've got three nav green on those. Yep, three nav green. Fuel quantity is loaded 6.2, check balanced. Yep. And flight management guidance system is all set. Altimeter is one zero one five. Check no changes to uh, to that one zero one five. That's fine. And Echo November Zulu Victor. I'm gonna pop on here. Echo November Zulu Victor runway three six. We can pop in there for situational awareness if we have any sort of issues on uh, on departure. So that's fine. Okay, let's. Um, Let's start getting ready to move then. Cabin crew, we're all ready to go. We've armed all the cross checks. Thank you. Over to Unicom. One to do this way. Stavanger traffic. Easy three four Alpha Mike. Parking stand one six. Pushing back, facing south. <coughs> pushback clearance let's get the rotating beacon light turned on tug is on its way nose wheel steering is disconnected and IQ pressure checked transponder and parking brake is still on lock the flight deck doors thrust levers at idle 
Before start checklist below the line, windows and doors closed and armed, rotating beacon light is on, uh, mobile phone is on for HD's performance calcs, and uh, parking brake is on as well. Okay, so we'll start the pushback facing south, and um, yeah, we'll get those engines started. Engine modes will go to ignition, and we shall start engine one. Check that APU bleed is running. Yep, good stuff. A safety card is in your seat pocket showing the exit routes, oxygen masks, life jackets and brace position that you must adopt if you hear brace, brace. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle and two at the front of the cabin. Floor lighting will guide you to an exit. Please be aware that your nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, leave all cabin baggage on board. Your seatbelt is fastened, adjusted, and released as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. If the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you to start the oxygen. Put the mask over your nose and mouth. Hold in place with the strap, Pull on each side to adjust. Put on your own mask before helping others. If we land on water, take the life jacket from under your seat. Put it over your head. Pass the tapes around your waist. Click together and pull the strap to adjust. Do not inflate it inside the aircraft. When outside, inflate by pulling the toggle. If it fails to inflate or needs topping up, Blow into the tube. We also carry flotation aids for children. Your tray table must now be stowed, armrest down, window blinds open, and seat belt fastened. We wish you a pleasant flight with EasyJet. Okay, so our pushback is almost complete. Pushing back from. Uh runway one six uh, from <laughs> parking stand one six and then we'll taxi out here onto Romeo and then um, on to uh, Golf four so complete the pushback there parking brake is um, on. Engines 1 and 2 have stabilized during the pushback and so we can go engine mode select to norm, APU bleed off, anti-ice on, APU masters are off, ground spoilers, rudder flaps 1 and set the trim which is 32 Ecom status normal. Okay, we're cleared to disconnect the tug. And we can now run the after start checklist. So, anti ice is on, ecom status checked. Pitch trim is 32, and rudder trim is 0. So, whilst we're sat here, I'll do a quick flight control check. Full left, full right. 
Fall up. Fall down. And rudder. Fall right. Fall left. All good. Willy, good, uh, good afternoon. Stavanger traffic, easy three four Alpha Mike, taxi now via Romeo, Golf four, Golf five, crossing runway two nine, Golf six, holding short at Golf seven for runway three six. So there's our clearance. Get the tax lights on and uh, start to go. And traffic departing uh, via fast, strong winds on uh, takeoff. Uh, yeah, I think we know about the strong winds on takeoff. That was uh, done in our departure brief. Nice to know that uh, the weather is living up to the meta. So here we are on Golf 4, and I do love airports that have signs on the uh, taxiway. Particularly for people like me who get lost. What a lovely nice sunny day, even if it is windy. Weather radar, predictive wind shear, get those turned on. Auto brake. Ding that cabin crew. TO config. Uh, so, our departure uh, flight controls has been uh, checked. Weather radar is on. Transponder is set to auto. Uh, we've done the auto break as well. We've dinged the cabin crew. Check TO config. Um, we will put the train on the departure for this uh, departure. We'll just hold here. We've got runway ahead. And whilst I'm holding here, just checking that I can't see any traffic. I've not heard anything on Unicom. We're just going to check that uh, nothing's changed with regards to the uh, QNH 1015. That's fine. All right, let's continue our taxi. So let's run the. Um, Departure briefing once more, so no changes to our uh, performance. QNH the same. Engine out procedure, if we have a problem, we'll uh, get up to 5,000 feet, circle back around to land runway 36. Terrain to the right, or to rather to the east of the, uh, of the airport that we're aware of. No turns below 3,000 feet, and departure matches what we've got in the FMGC. Stop climb is 6,000. So let's run that before takeoff checklist to the line. Flight controls have been checked. Departure briefing confirmed. Flaps config 1. FMA takeoff data. We've got 137 blue, 146 magenta. Climb nav blue, 6000 blue, 1 FD2, and a flex temp of uh, 70. Transponder is set. ECAM memo takeoff no blue. And electronic flight bag is stowed. There's a little bump in the uh, taxiway. Uh, Ghost Rider, I can, but not at the moment. <laughs> HD FS95 the world was flat as well wasn't it <laughs> uh, right just check this uh, this taxiway here so we go left and then we go to the right to make your full length uh, use of the runway Two, two, four, three, 
I wish there was a way just to reduce the uh, the brake pressure. It's basically all or nothing with a push button. Yeah, that windsock's uh, got every circle on it blowing, hasn't it? <laughs> when did windsocks come into Flight Simulator? They're quite new as well, aren't they? Particularly moving ones. Uh, Brian, if we pop the ILS into but do for takeoff, it shows runway and departure. Uh, yeah, and do you know what? I've tried that. I found it to be a little bit hit and miss. I'm not too worried. We don't need to know. Uh, we don't. We don't need to have runway and departure. Look at the grass. I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> I'm just stood here, admiring the waving grass. That's amazing. Uh, anyway, we've got a plane to fly. So. <laughs> Uh, brake temperature is uh, 15, the fine approach clearance is uh, nice and clear, we've not heard anything on Unicom. Let's get the uh, lights on, shall we? So, strobes, runway turn off, landing and takeoff lights, ding the uh, cabin. Packs off, engine mode select norm. And one two one two facing runway three six departure. Stefania traffic runway three four half like uh, lining up for departure runway three six. Maybe she would have departed on runway 29. Okay, so before takeoff, check the blue line, cabin is secure for takeoff, engine mode select norm, TCAS, and transponder. Thank God for the checklist, because we forgot about that. Uh, TARA tilt above, packs are off, and anti ice is on. Let's go. Start the chrono, let's see what this takeoff looks like, shall we? Takeoff. Set 50% N1. And set takeoff thrust. Man flex, SRS. So I'm expecting to have to use quite a bit of right rudder to hold that centre line. And I'm already having to put quite a lot into that. V1, rotate, hold that rudder. And we're away. So, lower the nose, set climb thrust, thrust climb climb, packs coming back on, We're going to be well above 3,000 feet before we need to make that turn, so that's fine. Flaps retracted and spoilers disarmed. Nice, good, positive speed trend.
Okay, no air traffic control online. Let's uh, set a higher climb rate now. So let's set flight level 200, set standard pressure, and 200 blue autopilot 1, now engaged. Very nice. I am quite looking forward to the next uh, world update. That should be lovely flying around here. You can see the crests of the uh, waves as well, given how windy it is. It's not calm, uh, not calm seas. lovely to see an audience with HD I've just come back in the chat that sounds like a great idea <laughs> okay let's release that cabin crew ladies and gentlemen please keep your seatbelt fastened while the seatbelt sign is on we recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you are seated toilets are located at each end of the cabin Remember that smoking is not permitted at any time. This includes e-cigarettes. I love the fact that when it's windy you can actually see uh, choppy waters down below. Okay, so probably past 10,000 feet now. Let's get those lights off. And we're at flight level, or oh, we're going to go to flight level 370 now, just check that optimum max, that's all good. So, f set flight level 370, 370 blue, a little bit of chop there, so we'll just wait for that to dissipate before releasing the uh, passengers. Doesn't that look good? Not quite sure why the airport has suddenly become pink. <laughs> Do you know we, we can overlook that? It wasn't pink at the at the time. Uh, Two dollar per question for HD series. Oh wow, man, I'd be in debt. I'm passing flight level 140, I think I'm alright now. We can release that, uh, release the passengers. So I imagine after the next world update, focusing on Scandinavia, etc., VFR flights around here could be uh, amazing. A little bit of a wind flex there. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Self-loading cargo passengers didn't scream, though, so that's a bonus. It can't have been too bad. Uh, thank you to the guys on Facebook, recently uh, following and liking. If anyone fancies sharing the uh, stream on Facebook as well, that would be lovely. Trying to grow the Facebook audience a little bit.
Oh yeah, there they go. Can anyone else hear the passengers screaming? We just leveled up. Why would they scream at leveling up? Ridiculous. It's a little bumpy. I've not tried this uh, in VR, the PC isn't powerful enough, but um, if you're trying this, uh, if you've got this in VR and you've obviously got turbulence, just a little bit like this, it's only a little light chop, but obviously you can see it. Um, I wonder how that makes you feel uh, with VR, does it actually make you feel as though, you know, you're, you're bobbing up and down a bit? I know a few people have tried it and fell off the sofa. Set smart recipes, hello? And we avoided all that ice. Beautiful. That looks nice, doesn't it? Ooh, that plane looks to be getting thrown around a little bit there. I can hear the uh, hear the passengers screaming in the headset. So I'm very keen to see what the frame rates will be like when we get to Brandenburg. Imagine taking a, uh, a Cessna or perhaps something a little bit quicker and just flying through the little mountain ranges down below. Uh, Captain S, no, I don't even have X-Plane uh, installed. Uh, Doctor, yeah, Copenhagen Control's online. We'll wait for them to call us. So we can get rid of the uh, terrain, don't need that. Oh, I just passed flight level 240, still in the climb and uh, should be cruising altitude in about 8 minutes or so, maybe a little bit less, depends on how that climb rate maintains. Uh, Crystal, can I tell you how to use the Q&H? In what sense? So the Q&H uh, bug is just here for the aircraft and you get your Q&H from the ATIS or if you've got the fly pad uh, you can also get it from, uh, from there as well. Just a few moments, we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase from our selection of fresh food available today. Full details can be found in your in-flight brochure. We accept payment in pounds, euros, most major currencies, and debit or credit cards. The correct change would be greatly appreciated, and if we could be of any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Danny, sir, thank you very, very, very much for your continued support to the channel and uh, your kind donation there. Be sure to grab a free drink from uh, the cabin crew as they come around.
snow capped uh, mountains then there's some lovely scenery flying around Norway and the rest of Scandinavia when we did the Santa run um, back at Christmas time <laughs> it was just dark wasn't it that was the problem didn't actually get to enjoy too much of it obviously on live time dark all uh, all day round isn't it then At HD, can we just buy some purple liquid that fluoresces <laughs> and <laughs> strap it into some like tubes around the uh, front of the PC? <laughs> it's not a gaming PC nowadays unless it's got some crazy LED lights flashing around the front of it. I have no idea what they do, what purpose they serve. Just to let you know that it's turned on. Whereas my other work PC just has a illuminated power button. don't think we're going to beat HD's record of uh, 37,000, what was it, 37,000 feet in uh, 17 minutes, something like that. Yeah, don't think we're going to beat that. Uh, Pierre, we departed about 14 minutes ago. Uh, Craig, I don't think Iceland and Greenland... I, do, do you know what? I can't say with any certainty, but I think it's just the Nordics that's going to be uh, in the next one, so sort of like the Scandinavia. 390 in 17 minutes. Yeah, we've got no chance. Probably got another nine minutes to go till we're at our cruising altitude. Uh, Jack H. Zulu refers to Zulu time. So, for instance, now here in England, we are um, we're in British summer time. So we are one hour ahead of Zulu time when the clocks went forward. So here it is 13:34 p.m. Zulu time is 12:34 p.m. Uh, speed break, so... Oh, Iceland is in there! Oh, that's good. Iceland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland. Next world update. Fantastic. Uh, Courage man on. Why are you spamming my chat, my friend? So I'm looking forward to... Uh, Looking forward to flying to those places, particularly Reykjavik. I like flying there. I reckon for the, anyone that asks when you're going to land, you should suffer a donation punishment. There's a clock at the top of the stream. <laughs> Willie, bitter and twisted, what a great name. <laughs> uh, Anna, the passenger announcements come from uh, self loading cargo. So just check in, we've still got just Copenhagen Control online, which uh, I do think we fly through. Uh, there's a good way to check. If you come down to the operational flight plan, you, the OFP will tell us. On here, uh, yes, so once we get to uh, AMSEV, that's where we enter their airspace, AMSEV. 
Nigel Lamb on Facebook, thanks for the follow and the like, of course. Uh, so we're about 40 miles away from Amsev. And what's the control frequency? 12137. So we'll just key that up. We'll tune in now. We're only 36 miles away. And there's the boundary point. So we could perhaps give him a little call actually, make sure we're not going to do a conflict with any of his uh, his traffic. Copenhagen Control, good afternoon, easy 34 Alpha Mike, passing flight level 340 for 370, direct AMSEV. Easy 34 Alpha Mike, Copenhagen, good afternoon, squawk 4651. 4651, the squawk for easy 34 Alpha Mike. Okay, then 25 Golf, turn left heading 080, all the exercise is on way 27. That was the two stations in one, first KLM 25 Golf, right turn heading 080, Vector side is one way 27. Right heading 280, uh, Vector side is one way 27. KLM 25 Golf, heading 080. Heading 080. Uh, HD, is that me? TCAS is on. It was on. It may not have shown it. Like the sun's shining on it, so you may not have seen it, but TCAS was on. I know for a fact TCAS was uh, on because I forgot it until I did the checklist and then realised. <laughs> Uh, Baggy Sim, do I have problems with directs in the A320? Going direct, no. Going direct seems fine. It's trying to clear things. Get them too fast, guys. This is fine. Every fire, sir. This is fine. Get them too fast. 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 Okay, so we should be on the ground in around about an hour. Oh, that's good news for my kid at school. I should be there to pick him up on time. And 2037 in the box. 71 Charlie. And we've got Mac Alt Star. And Alt Cruise. <laughs> oh, HD, I like that. Correct. You're going to use that line in the future, though, aren't you, mate? <laughs> I suppose I, had, don't, I don't have to tell them that it was a virtual aircraft, do I? Good afternoon, speed by 464, coming, squawk 2013. 
Ah, Digital, good morning, sir. Are you well? Oh, HD, there's your first mistake. Don't take the wife with you. Taxi to gate Bravo 8 via Bravo, Yankee and Mike, cross runway 1-2. Bravo 8 via Bravo, Yankee and Mike, cross runway 1-2, Yankee and Mike. Charlie, confirm you're in down to Lamox. I was just about, just about to ask if you could uh, repeat that again. Uh, Lima Alpha Mike. Uh, digital, has the flight there? ended on uh, Lima Alpha Mike Australia. Facebook? Oh, wow, yes, okay. Bit strange. Right, Lamo can somewhat help. Not quite sure uh, what's done that. Uh, oh, Danny, sir, thank you very much for uh, for your donation again. And uh, subsequent donations as well, wow. Very, very kind of you. Uh, Danny says, you'll be a member in the future, but you need to get a credit card. For, oh, mate, don't, don't go and get yourself into, uh, into trouble with credit cards. I avoid them like the plague if I can. Uh, HD, especially when you say that to someone younger. Yeah, well, I can kind of understand a point there. Doesn't mean I wouldn't be guilty of doing it myself. <laughs> imagine, imagine if sort of like in, t I don't know, 12 months, two years, if I'm still sat here doing this, which would be lovely, if I uh, ever turned into a full-time uh, full occupation. Uh, People ask me what I do. I can just say I fly aircraft for a living. Not tell them uh, the full deal, the full story, of course. So now at the cruising altitude, let's just cycle through those ECAMs. Check all as well. Electrical page looks good. Fuel, 31 kilogram a minute. Fuel used, 1.7 tonnes, coming up to 1.8. Temperatures, 24. Doors all armed still. Uh, all computers working, all systems normal. Right. Uh, let's just grab the weather for Copenhagen. In case we need it for any reason. Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. Send that off. And let's check our progress. So where are we? We should be in a couple of minutes, so about 26, 7, 8, about 28 minutes, we should be at American Airlines. <laughs> the web, waypoint AAL, 27, 28 minutes, that's spot on. 4.2 tons of fuel remaining at that point. We've got, ooh, four, just under 4.5, so that's okay. Hey Lee, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, East Presley, you're at work but can't resist. Ah, awesome stuff. That's what we like to hear. Just pop us on in the background. Uh, JJ, when do we open the bomb doors? Uh, when we're over the dam. At night. Willie, you need to go to sleep in ten minutes. What? You need to drop off. <laughs> I'm presuming not to uh, not to the land of Nod. Oh, so what have we got then? And oh, weather's looking uh, nice in Berlin. Two nine zero at nine. Ceiling and uh, visibility is okay. One zero one three, and then at Copenhagen, where we're near now. Uh, we're in two seven zero at. 20. Ceiling visibility again, okay. 
One zero one zero. Yeah, nice. Little blustery over the uh, Scandinavia today. I uh, sure about this, the A320 Neo. Oh yeah, HD, forgot you got your uh, quiz, you got your quiz to do. Shame you wouldn't be able to uh, manipulate it and pop it, uh, pop some of the questions in the chat. See how many, <laughs> see how many of us virtual pilots get it right. Uh, Paolo, where do you have to stand in order to catch the uh, the Airbus? Uh, usually at the uh, the air gate or the ramp. I would advise against sitting in the wheel well. That doesn't usually end well. Sure, so the A330 is a wide body designed for uh, long haul aircraft, uh, long haul flights. The A320 is uh, short to medium haul, narrow body aircraft. <laughs> HD is a good one, no one will know this. <laughs> Uh, so, Tapani, the user points are basically points at which there is no fixed place. You have to decide when you're going to do whatever manoeuvre it is. So they're usually dependent upon you being above a certain altitude before you can make a turn, for example. So they do make sense. Look at that weather that's just come on screen. Gusting 31. Glad we're not going there. Dark, you're off to work. Have a good one, mate. Speak to you soon. HD, is it multiple choice? Should have asked that before, and shouldn't we? So, if I if it wasn't multiple choice HD, my options would be when setting takeoff thrust, either Togo Flex or maximum continuous thrust. Oh, I see. It's multiple choice. In that case, go on then. Uh, sure, but I prefer the uh, the Airbus. I like the logic of the Airbus. Uh, Mike, not that I've come across so far. I really like the experimental. Much nicer to fly and handle in trickier weather situations. We also need to know, HD, when you can, I know you're busy tapping away. We also need to know how many options are we available to uh, select. Can we select more than one, or is it just a uh, single answer? Okay, I'm 
Junior Freak 6, thank you for your subscription, my friend. Hope you're enjoying the flight. And HD, how many can you select? Is it just one, two, or three? Um, if I can only select one, mine is going to be option B. So there's my answer. I shall wait to see what everybody else says. Oh, that's quiet now we've come inside. In just a few moments, we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase a selection of hot beverages together with drinks and snacks from the bar. We accept payment in pounds, euros, most major currencies and debit or credit cards. The correct change would be greatly appreciated. And if we can be of any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. So HD is starting the chrono. Two minutes, guys, get that answer in. I've given mine verbally. And whilst we're doing that, if uh, those of you that are watching could be so kind as to hit the like button on the stream, that would be lovely. Uh, Willie, I can give you a bit of information about SRS, um, but not until HD's given the answer. Then again, if I've got the answer wrong, I'm not going to give you any information on SRS because I've just proved it to be wrong. <laughs> when do we leave Copenhagen airspace? Uh, around 58 minutes into the flight at Rodem. So, so we're going to be on Copenhagen Airspace for another 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or so. Sky and turn one Charlie, welcome to Copenhagen. Gate Bravo 6 via Bravo, Yankee and Mike, cross runway 1 2. Go for it, HD, put us out of our misery. What should be C? Yeah, nobody, uh, yeah, nobody yeah, answered C. Cross, uh, one, two, someone shot. Duh. Do you know what, HD? What put me off with that was on the ground for 30 seconds. I thought you'd get SRS if you had an engine failure in flight. Um, or maybe just after takeoff. Uh, like a minute or so after takeoff, and if you set uh, MCT aircraft at a target V2 plus 10 20. HD, can you clarify something for me then? Well, and everybody else. Um, is SRS only available after takeoff? 
I thought SRS could act would activate if, uh, well, as I say, if maybe we had an engine failure a minute or so in uh, after departure. Mind you, you'd already be in SRS mode then, wouldn't you? So it wouldn't specifically need to reactivate itself, I guess. Oh well, we've all failed. Don't rely on us for your tech exam, will you? <laughs> All quiet on the air traffic control front. I believe the camera crew was still ah. serving drinks, so uh, be sure to go and grab one if you're not working. Well, even if you are working, why not? Perhaps not if you're doing something important. Willie, and <laughs> enjoy your promotion, my friend. And uh, off you go, back to work. Don't drink too much. <laughs> See you later, mate. Uh, Nick, no frame rate issues at the moment. It's actually been really, really good. Thank you for a nice service. Have a great day. Bye bye. It was also very good coming out of Stavanger, which was nice. So guys, if you're enjoying the flight, and of course, if uh, perhaps you're new to the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. We're chasing 10,000 now. What a milestone. Ah, uh, HD, question two. <laughs> oh, Lee and Tem, I'm afraid Will has got to head back to work. HD, the answer is no. I said that with some air of authority, didn't I? <laughs> if that turns out to be wrong, that's egg on my face. Good afternoon, North Shore Line and Line 6, coming on hold, Squawk 2701. I'm now seeing people reply to HD's question in the chat. I don't know how far behind the stream is, so I don't know at which point you're going to actually hear me say no. Yeah, East Birds, just go with yes. You're probably right. <laughs> Digital, that's very, cr very, very true. If you're going to be wrong, do it confidently. <laughs> that's the way I get through life. Hi, Liam. Captain Harbour Control, this is Qantas 210. Just request uh, get away from the computer for about 10 minutes. Qantas 210, that is approved. You can report when you're back. 
So that was a Qantas aircraft. He one, two, one, two, obviously has an Australian accent, as you can tell. What time is it over there? It must be like uh, gone midnight, something like that. And he's here in uh, he's here in Northern Europe. Ah, wow! If he's flying all the way back to Australia, that'd be interesting. He's got to make a stop over anyway, isn't he? I don't think they can do uh, Scandinavia to Australia just yet. Or oh, HDR like this, no one will know this. Is this multiple choice? Oh, right, well, let's have a look at some arrival briefing while HD types in his next uh, quizzical quiz question. Uh, so, from Ketap, let's have a look. Uh, if we just pull up the uh, pull up the navigation display and we can zoom, that, uh, zoom in on that to check that's looking correct. Uh, HD, what's the minimum engine oil quantity? <laughs> what's flight sim pilot needs to know that? What's the minimum engine oil quantity when setting up the aircraft? There's two valves, one for a cold and warm. You'll give us a clue. Go for it. It's between five and ten quarts. Well, that's a good clue. If one of us goes with five, the next with six, the next with seven, the next with etc. etc. We, uh, what well, one of us is bound to get it right, yeah. Do you know I I've got a book which is just out of reach that I bet tells me. Um, anyway, as I was doing, checking this uh, flight plan out. So I'm just checking the coding for this. This is looking really accurate. 403, 13, 23, 33, 44, 45, up to 37, 447, and all the way back in uh, to Axum. Uh, not Axum, Zanim. I just made a waypoint up. Zanim. Zanim is the final approach fix. And there it is. Zanim is nine miles away. I uh, don't think we've got air traffic control online for uh, anywhere like that, so it looks like we can continue with this. Uh, so which approach is it? Two five left. And it's the Ketab um, two five left. Uh, Alan, if you press the right alt key, right alt key, and then select the window, it'll uh, it'll work for you. We'll close that down now. Um, so what else do we need to know about this? Uh, these maximum speeds of 220 knots, I would imagine. Uh, we can probably disregard those as it's not exactly that busy. Uh, we probably won't also fly the full extended star either. We can probably take a little bit of a shortcut. Um, so if we aim to be actually if we aim to be 6,000 feet by Delta Bravo 423, um, <coughs> that's probably uh, that's probably about right. Uh, so that's uh, that's fine. And 3,000 feet at Zanim. Uh, what's our platform altitude? Alright, so the platform altitude is 3,000 feet. Transition is... Dun 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 dun. Air traffic control, of course, will use 5,000 feet, the altitude. Transition altitude 5,000 feet. Minimum safe altitude is 2,400 feet, nice and low. Uh, weather is good. Cat one approach. Three four nine. ILS frequency one zero nine point five. Elevation is one four nine. And our missed approach. Is four thousand feet. Yeah, 
HD, when the simulator becomes that real, then we know that we've got it made. And if we check the engine page... There's your oil. Which will always... Over to Unicom now, thanks for the service. Easy 3 for half mic, bye bye. Um, yeah. Well, this is what Fly-by-Wire are wanting to do, you see. Fly-by-Wire are wanting to bring in y your own aircraft, which you fly and fly, and every time you fly it, it degrades performance a tiny bit. So this may actually become an issue, and then you're going to have to check it prior to flying, and then, uh, obviously, if it uh, requires oil, some somehow they're going to have an oil top-up button, or you need to press a button on the fly pad to get the ground crew to come and sort it out. Uh, I think that's going to be really, really neat. No longer is things going to be uh, going to be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to use the bearing distance two function in a minute to help me plan this approach. Uh, so I want to be at about six thousand. Oh, flat level six zero at about. Oh, what's that? Five. 10, call it 11, uh, at about 11, about 18 miles, 18 miles south of Ketab. We want to be at file 60. Uh, so if we go to the progress page, uh, Ketab, try spelling it right. Um, so Call it. Uh, do, do, do call it one six zero degrees. And about twenty miles. Insert. Is Ketab not in the database? Really? Did I spell it wrong? Oh, it's with a P at the end. That'd be why Ketab. Uh, 160, about 20 miles. There we go. So I want to be at flight level 60 in about 120, uh, 128 miles time. Uh, HD, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you asked that, the uh, the stream was actually showing the uh, <laughs> was showing the landing gear and uh, V speed chart. So I'm going to come out of the aircraft so no one can uh, no one can quickly look. <laughs> uh, Alan, do you think it will be easy? Quicker for fly by wire to release the 320 family like 1921, etc., then move them to the A350, the A380. Do you know what? I can't wait to fly the A380. That's the sort of thing that I'm going to set up flying, then go to bed, then come back. Um, but they have got plans to release the 1921 because uh, once they've got the model sorted, it's exactly the same sort of systems for the, uh, for the 320, which they've already built. Ladies and gentlemen, take full advantage of your tax-free allowances today and make some amazing savings with our boutique range. In your in-flight brochure, you'll find details of our award-winning selection of gifts, most with massive discounts, some of which are exclusive to you as an EasyJet customer. Make the most of your opportunity to shop and save from the comfort of your seat. 
If you'd like to see any products, have any questions, or would like to make great savings, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Nice fluffy white clouds again. We like weather like that. Sometimes you get turbulence flying through them, coming down to be expected. They're just thermal clouds, aren't they? Cumulus clouds. Uh, HD, do you know, I don't think you can, but I didn't know if I was doing it right. Talk me through, once it's done, if we can add it into the flight plan, because that would be quite neat. Uh, so, if you can just give us a step-by-step -step instruction guide on uh, on that that would be lovely so obviously we've got that uh, we've got that point there so you can see uh, let us know how we can add that to the flight plan that'd be nice to see it I'll leave you to tap away the instructions on that how far are we away we're about a uh, we're about a hundred miles away aren't we so we're probably going to look to start our descent anyway we've, we've um, the weather hasn't changed too much, but let's go AOC, weather request, and send that off. Uh, yes, yeah, so the uh, waypoint distance bearing is all typed in, and it's showing me the, uh, the, the exact information I wanted. That's great. Um, so can you add that onto the, uh, onto the flight plan? A few people have asked me that. If you can get that on the navigation uh, page. Uh, right, okay, let me type it in again then. Uh, what was it? Ketap. Um, what did it say? Heading 160, 20, about 20 miles away. Oh, so you should be able to just enter that um, on the flight plan page. Is that what you're saying? So if I put that after Ketab, for example. No, it's not letting me enter anything. <coughs> That's a shame. Uh, I just need to start the descent HD, then we can have a go at that if you want. Uh, temperature 17 degrees, that's nice. Winds 290 at 9. Transit altitude, we said 5,000 feet. And the barrow is 349. There we go. Uh, right, so we're heading down to flight level 6 zero. A bit of cloud blows, we'll get anti ice on as well for that. So, set flight level 6 zero. And thrust idle descent. And, ooh, have we got a constraint? Uh, actually, are those constraints accurate? I bet they are. Uh, spring that in. Look, there is a constraint there at Delta Bravo 413.
So just rolled that speed up there. Watch, <laughs> watch the aircraft nose dive a little bit to try and uh, target it. Let's get the ice on. In um, descent, of course, it will also respect these constraints. So we shall see how that uh, how that plays out. Uh, let's see if we can add that as a waypoint. Then, where would it be? Would it be after around uh, Delta Bravo four two three? So it'd be after this one. Uh, oh no, because it's a hard coded star uh, HD. I still can't. I still can't faff about with them. I'm afraid. Uh, no, I can't even go to the equi time point. Something else that will come soon, I presume. Uh, Chumi, where am I going to park? No idea. Can have a quick look. Uh, so we'll be parking at Apron. Oh, we'll probably be parking. Oh, uh, well, let's go Apron Bravo. Apron Bravo. Two five left. We'll vacate, probably, hopefully, onto uh, onto Mike five. Then make a right turn, taxi back for your uh, yeah Alpha to Victor two, and um, taxi in. In fact, are any of these one way? Not that have been marked up, so that's all right. Oh, HD, you're going to give me step-by-step -step instructions for this bit, mate. <laughs> Would it be there? Enter it into that waypoint. See if we can pop it there. Uh, so all I've done is go data, page 2. We've got stored waypoints, navades, runways, routes. I've never actually played with this. Let's try it. Um, so, what? Uh, what was it? Ketab. One six zero the heading and twenty miles. <laughs> Not allowed. So <coughs> I can't create a pseudo waypoint. Not yet. Uh Radnav page, ILS frequency one zero nine point five. Oh, try again. Zero nine point five. Put that in. Anything else that we can pop into the red nav to help us if we uh, require it. We can put the. Uh, I'll tell you what. Which one are we using on the missed approach? Climb runway track 3000, six miles east of uh, Berlin Brandenburg. Yeah, so we'll use that one. Uh, An inbound kill fox. Okay, uh, so we'll put the Brandenburg and the Klasdorf VOR in there. Uh, so what have we got? Bravo, Bravo, India. And Klasdorf, Kilo Limo Fox. So 
It's all set up. Uh, so passing now flight level 230 on our way down. Uh, Mike, if you go into your vPilot client, uh, then there is an option to set it. Uh, in fact, can I show this? One sec. Oh, I can. Uh, go to your settings and is it notifications. Yeah, there you go. Show incoming text messages in simulator. That's all you're doing to make, get those up. Um, and I've got the tips in the simulator turned off as well, so uh, that should be fine. So take your bets and place them now. What's going to happen on arrival? I'm actually quite glad there's no air traffic control at the airport. What's going to happen on arrival? Following the latest window update, we know we've got frame rate issues affecting not just Flight Simulator, but a whole load of games. And we're landing at Aerosoft's beautifully crafted Brandenburg Berlin Airport. Um, Berlin Brandenburg Airport, whichever you wish to call it. It's highly detailed. We've been there before without any issues, so I know the computer handles it sublimely well. No issues at all landing there in the past. Been there a couple of times. Place your bets now. What frame rates are we going to get on landing? <laughs> we, we, we don't bet. We don't bet the touchdown rates anymore. <laughs> we, we bet the frame rates. <laughs> uh, and it's not detected. That's fine. We'll leave that on just for. Uh, there's a few more clouds to. Uh, to fall through at the moment. So weather and landing information is all uh, obtained and sorted. Flight management guidance computer is set. Landing elevation is 149. Our arrival briefing is pretty straightforward once again. Uh, just to refresh that. So we're coming in on the Ketab uh, arrival. We'll get here to Delta Bravo 433. Then we'll start making the, uh, the downwind leg. Then we can uh, cut short, go into heading mode, make our base turn onto final. Um, to uh, Zanin. 3,000 feet, the platform altitude, Mr. Proach, is 4,000 feet. And terrain not required. Minimum safe altitude is 2,400 feet, nice and low. Nothing really to worry about with, uh, with that regard. So the QNH is 1013. Let's just check that's still the same. Is that the case? Oh, it's dropped. 1012. Let's just change that in the performance page. 1012. Set that on the standby. And we're at Ketab now. Uh, right, I've just come back in the chat. Oh, Chris H, you... Uh, I remember that. Yeah, fuel quantity indicator, they fitted the wrong one, didn't they? Dope. Thank you. 
by tidying up your tray table and handing them any litters they come around, that would be most appreciated. For safety reasons, we ask now that you please turn off all electronic devices or switch them to airplane mode until after we have landed. Please note that the aircraft toilets are now out of use. If you wish to become a EasyJet Zip Pilot Channel member, please contact a member of your cab crew. We will be happy to assist you. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed your flight. Uh, HD, you're also right there as well. You've got a great memory. They uh, they didn't feather the props, <coughs> which obviously uh, reduced their airspeed significantly, um, or rather significantly quicker, meaning they couldn't glide as far as they'd hoped. Let's just make a, a quick call now, shall we? Berlin, Brandenburg traffic easy. 34 Alpha Mike is 20 miles to the north. Uh, planning to land runway 25 left. Berlin traffic easy. Transport is on. It's not final to my from my spot. Scarlet to my left. Okay, seatbelts on. Approach checklist, minimum selected on both sides, three, four, nine. Engine mode select norm, electronic flight bag is stowed and we've done our arrival briefing. There was also an incident, wasn't there, I forget which turboprop it was, where um, when an aircraft had a problem, the uh, the turboprop should fall into the feather position automatically and they didn't did they and they couldn't replicate it until they actually took the aircraft back up into the air because it didn't work on the ground on the ground it worked perfectly but you throw in um, throw in real world performance factors and it's a, a different ball game Okay, so we can start to pull that speed back now, a little bit of speed brakes to help with that. And there we go, we're under 250 knots for 10,000 feet, that, uh, that's fine. Turbo props are great fun until they break. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's get down to our platform. So set altitude 3,000 feet and set local pressure 1012. Thrust open descent. We can also go to uh, the approach phase now. Set approach phase and manage speed. So we're currently about 20, uh, 20 miles away. <coughs> we'll get down to around uh, 6,000 feet. We should then be able to make that uh, base turn. Come in for a nice long final. Just get down a little bit quicker, shall we? Then we can make that turn a little quicker. Otherwise, we're going to be above the glide slope. Uh, so speed and set 2,100 feet per minute. Uh, 
Okay, let's go to heading mode and start bringing her around for our uh, our arrival. We come round to around two hundred degrees. Slow that rate of descent down, that'll help us lose speed. Get back to green dot, we'll put the flaps out and start configuring. <laughs> I love the fact that the chat is live, uh, but the stream isn't. I can reduce the rate of descent just Stay after I'd finished gentlemen. doing it. We will shortly be landing. Please ensure your cabin bag is safely stowed with your laptop inside. Your tray table must be stowed, armrest down, and window blind open. You now need to be seated with your seatbelt fastened, ready for landing. Please help us by handing in any rubbish, newspapers, or magazines that you do not want to take with you. The toilets are no longer in service. Okay, so what are we with? 220 knots speed check. Let's go flaps one. And lock blue is armed. And lock capture. What are we, 23 miles away? Nice. <coughs> Nice long approach, we can admire the scenery. The fact that we're a little bit lower down actually may help us here. Um, with the scenery loading, I mean, because we're lower down, it might get that scenery in a bit quicker, help with our frame rates as we come in. There we go. Localizer mode. As we've captured that, we can get the anti-ice off now. And it's such a clear day, we can even see the runway. Glide slope is now showing. Berlin Brandenburg traffic, easy 34, Alpha Mike established 20 miles for runway 25 left. Moment of truth now, guys. Place your bets on the frame rates. And if you uh, haven't hit the like button on the stream, please do consider doing so. And if you've enjoyed the flight today, why not also consider subscribing to the channel? Would love to hit that 10,000 mark. What time are we on here in the UK? Uh, 14.36. Oh, bags of time to pick the kid up. I might even get a replay in. Uh, HD almost a continuous descent approach. Yeah, maybe it'd be nice. <laughs> Even if it's 500 feet per minute, it's uh, it's almost. And we go alt star. Uh, Zanim is the point, so we're probably about five miles five miles too soon for that continuous descent. We're going to level off now at 3,000. <coughs> <laughs> Willie, you've heard four pints before landing increases the frame rate. <laughs> Willie, why are you back? Haven't you got work? Uh, 
And glide slope blue. Autopilot two engaged. Cat three jewel. Quick look outside before we have to concentrate. It really does look amazing, doesn't it? Oh, HD, good to know, thank you. Oh, Willie, if, we're, uh, if I'm not out of here by three o'clock, then uh, my six-year-old's got a problem. Okay, glide slope is alive. We'll get glide slope captured in a moment. So, flaps two. Speed check, flaps two. Oh, that's nice. I got a little bit of a lift then. That's not normally been happening with flaps two. Glide slope captured. <coughs> Just under nine miles to run. And glide slope. So that wind coming from the right is about uh, 2, 15 knots. Radio altimeter alive. Yeah, HD, we've got a flap 2 balloon. I don't know if I said that as it happened and you've just seen it in the stream or not. Brandenburg traffic, easy 3-4, Alpha Mike, uh, 6 mile final, runway 2-5 left. Okay, so, landing gear down, auto brake not required, ground spoilers armed, lights, ding that cabin crew. And flaps three, speed check. <coughs> flaps three. I forgot to turn on the seatbelt sign in self loading cargo. <laughs> and flaps full. Yeah, HD, I think if air traffic control were online, they'd have probably told us 180 to 8 mile and uh, 160 to 4 mile and uh, before reducing to our final approach speed. I'm just being nice and lazy today. Right, so when are these frame rate issues going to kick in? We'll see in a minute. How is it going to handle it? Remember guys, what I did do is I spawned here at Berlin 1, prior to doing the flight. Right, 1,000 feet. I'm going to knock the autopilot off now. Autopilot 1, 2, off. I have control. Cat 3, single. Also taking the autopilot off, I think it helps with frame rates and potential issues because if we start to get a little bit of stuttering, the autopilot does not like it. Just keep that rate of descent up. That's 700 feet per minute. That's holding quite nicely. 500. 500 feet, approach stable. 400. Land. Three 
300, 100 above. Let's get that center line back on track. 200, minimum. Continue. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Try. Ooh. A little bit of wavering around that center line there. And again, just a couple of stutters, but nowhere near as much as I uh, was expecting. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I was expecting much worse. And reverses are off. Ladies and gentlemen, the cabin crew will shortly be leaving their seats to perform safety-related duties. However, we ask that you remain seated until the fastened seatbelt sign has been switched off. Portable electronic devices for messaging, calls or internet access may now be used. Please make sure that you take all your personal belongings with you, checking in the seat pocket, underneath the seat and in the overhead lockers. Do take care when opening the lockers in case anything falls out. Smoking is not permitted until you reach a designated smoking area. On behalf of the captain and the crew, it has been our pleasure looking after you today. Our ground crew will help you complete your EasyJet journey. For the latest news, promotions, flight and destination information, check out our official Facebook page, Twitter or EasyJet app. So actually, those frame rates held up a lot better than I expected them to. I think the biggest issue was just after touchdown. We got a few stutters, and uh, as I was trying to hold that center line with the rudder, you could see it waving off left and right. A bit difficult to do when uh, you're trying to predict what's going to happen. Easy 3 for half for Mike, Berlin, Brandenburg, traffic, runway three five, uh, 2 5 left, vacated. Uh, so now, what are we doing? We're taxiing, we're looking for Victor 2. Get that APU started. Pretty certain that KLM was hovering just then. <laughs> Don't think he had a landing gear. What was the uh, landing uh, rate? Just out of interest with that, guys. I don't get to see that. So I'm going to put a replay in, and that may be a little bit smoother, of course, because everything's already rendered into the sim. So we'll see what that looks like in a moment. Uh, oh yeah, that looks interesting. I can see a couple of aircraft on final now. Just out there. I think one's just entered a cloud. <laughs> 830, uh, 800, wow. <laughs> I think that might not be accurate. I think the fr I think it jumped a couple of frames. <laughs> oh well, that's got to go down in history as the worst one yet. What will be good? Well, at the moment, we'll do in, in a minute. We'll do the replay. And it gives you a landing rate even for uh, the replay, which is probably a bit more accurate. I guess we'll find out, won't we?
I think my my employer may be having stern words with me if I'm landing at that sort of rate. have to make the go around, that's a shame. Just wondered if we could see Nick on that go around. Okay, so I'm going to hold that there. We'll not set parking brake or anything like that. We're going to quickly watch a replay. We've got time to watch a replay. Then I need to go and get uh, get the boy from school. How did we uh, do with the parking? Oh, we overshot. Never mind. Uh, right, so I need to come off VATSIM. I need to exit self-loading cargo. Goodbye to you guys. Thanks to everyone on VATSIM for flying with me. Let's disconnect from there. And now let's load up. The uh, the replay and we'll enjoy hopefully a much smoother <laughs> a smoother landing than <laughs> 800 odd feet per minute. So let's just skip forward a little bit until we're on final. And it's great that we can just uh, find out when we're on final. We can just watch the uh, watch the ILS rolls and the distance coming down. Let's go down to about ten mile final. There we go. Also, turn off the uh, proximity warning alarms. So you can see we've uh, got a few blurry textures at the moment, but they're going to populate uh, populate back in in a second. That's a nice little hill. Do you reckon you can just go for a walk around there? A few nice lakes as well, a bit of fishing. We've recently started taking the um, taking the girls, the triplets, to uh, walk around the local lake, um, but we keep them strapped in their pram at the moment because I just don't want the stress of what may happen if we let them out. <laughs> Will you laugh if the replay registers a crash? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Gorgeous weather today. That wind on departure was uh, <coughs> was quite nice. Having to control that, then uh, a little bit of air traffic control throughout the uh, throughout the flight over Copenhagen. Gorgeous scenery on departure as well. That was really nice. And again, coming into a nicely detailed airport, courtesy of Aerosoft. So big thanks to them. We've also got, uh, is it Hamburg that Aerosoft have just released? We're going to be, uh, we're going to fly into there pretty soon. Aerosoft have been kind enough to uh, give a copy, so we're going to have a look at that. So looking forward to flying to Hamburg in an upcoming stream. <coughs> <laughs> mm. Willie, you can uh, you can imagine the look that the fathers give you. I'm not going to repeat what that look <laughs> appears to be saying live on air. Uh, J Duff is 42. This is how I earn a living. <laughs> I wish it was.
So I think it's at this point. Oh, look at that, the little shopping mall. Uh, oh, Joe, I'm going to have to get the drone camera out to that. I've not noticed that before. How far have uh, Aerosoft actually uh, gone with their uh, detail of Berlin Brandenburg? That's amazing. That looks like an old quarry with a little bit of water sat in it. I want to go shopping now. Is Germany still in lockdown? Let's see what the landing rate is now. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's not eight hundred. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, right, you know what I'm going to do? Just whilst that uh, whilst that continues to play out, let me just take the drone camera. Let's just unlock it from the aircraft. So off the aircraft goes. Uh, drone speed. I want to find that shopping mall on our aisle. So where was that? Do you guys ever do this? Just park the aircraft up somewhere and then take the drone camera out for a spin. I've become more and more guilty of that over the next, uh, over the last few days. And it is great. Look at this. Is that IKEA? It's got to be an IKEA. It's an IKEA. <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. What else have we got? Anyone for a hot dog? Oh, what's the price on patio furniture? It's all out of stock over here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what's that? The Mega Zoo? I bet that's really there, isn't it? And, uh, oh look, Babies are Us. Toys R Us. This is amazing. This is the first time I've seen uh, full-on brands outside of the airport. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the aircraft will be fine. The aircraft's playing a replay. By the time we get back to the aircraft, it'll be uh, on stand. So what we've got? Mega, f uh, Mega Zoo. We've got a Vodafone. Neto. Neto, is that still going? We've just come from Scandinavia. Uh, Reno, Babies R Us, Toys R Us. Oh, thank God that place closed down. Otherwise, we'd have spent a fortune over the last couple of years. Uh, Medium Marked. And Skonto, Mobile Support. What else we got? Uh, da, da, da. There's probably a cinema somewhere around here as well, isn't there? Something like that. That's amazing. What detail? What's that? Uh, is this a metro? Is that a metro? Is in metro station? Is there a metro station here? I'm going to get on Google Earth. That looks metro uh, station-ish, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it was very busy in the car park when that was uh, when that picture was taken. See, if you haven't ever been to the channel before, hit the like button and uh, subscribe. It's very educational. You learn so much. <laughs> Listen to me going, wow. Used to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 95 graphics. That's stunning. Uh, right, is my plane parked up yet? Where is it? Oh, no, it's still taxiing. Look, you can just see it. Nick has tower just come online. Oh, he was late to the party, wasn't he? Uh, Willie, yeah, but Metro probably is a supermarket rather than an actual Metro rail line. I was being very literal. Nice stuff. 
Okay then guys, right, thank you very very much for watching, as I say, if you're new to the channel please do consider hitting that uh, subscribe button and giving a like to the screen. Uh, thank you to all of you who have uh, watched, the, uh, watched the flight this afternoon, big thank you to those that have donated and contributed to the channel and of course a massive thanks to HD and to all the EasyJet YouTube channel members as well, always great to see that community growing and uh, chatting with you on uh, on discord as well after uh, after the flights great stuff i will uh, i'm not uh, not back on tonight no live stream tonight uh, the next one is most likely tomorrow evening so i look forward to seeing you all again for the next flight very very soon thanks very much for watching everybody i'll leave you with one more replay bye bye Two thousand five hundred. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Twenty. Ten, five, 